Caden was quiet, but affectionate, patient and lovable, the kind of friend you can only dream about. He also existed entirely in the mind of Rose, a 19-year-old college student I met online. We'd been chatting for a couple months when she first mentioned Caden. She had a clear mental image of what he looked like, formed by compositing different pieces of furry artwork she'd found online. Caden is a red fox, and each of his front paws was a different color, one black and one white. It's so much easier for me to trust something that's not human, she told me. Caden was a tulpa, a being that allegedly existed in Rose's mind, but acted outside of her conscious control. Rose was a tulpamancer, a member of an online community inspired by Tibetan meditation practices. Tulpamancers believe that you can create life out of the essence of thought, or thought form, via training and focus. Rose wanted a companion, someone she could talk to, but her social anxiety was keeping her from meeting new people. To her, a tulpa seemed like the perfect solution. But there was one problem. Rose had been part of the tulpa community for months, but she had never been able to make Caden real to her. It seemed to me that tulpamancers were a real-life version of the Emperor's new clothes. That Rose wasn't the only person involved with the community who had failed to create her tulpa. She was just the only one who admitted it to me. Everyone else, I thought, was faking so they could be part of the club. And this made sense to me. If these people were desperate for community, and the way to get that was to pretend you could talk to an imaginary friend, maybe that was worth it to them. But Rose was having doubts. She showed me a blog where a would-be tulpamancer named Coomer chronicled his journey over two years, creating a tulpa named Aguiji. At first, the results seemed promising. They were able to speak to each other within the first week. Soon, Oguiji herself began making contributions to the blog, sharing her side of their interactions. And both of them seemed happy. But then Coomer started reporting headaches. He, Coomer, wrote less and less, and Oguiji wrote more. Oguiji revealed that they had decided to switch places, and that she was the one controlling his body now. And this began a struggle between the creator and the creation for control of their body, like Jekyll and Hyde. This is Oguiji. She kind of reminds me of Samara from The Ring. And this wasn't even the only such story online. I quickly found several others, many from former skeptics, warning people that tulpas were dangerous and a bad idea. But this wasn't enough. I wanted to test this theory. And to do that, I had to practice tulpamancy, which meant creating a tulpa. I named him Roger. He's a talking iguana that rides on my shoulder and sounds like Morgan Freeman. I found a blog that posted daily exercises designed to strengthen the connection between you and your tulpa. They were things like, talk to your tulpa for an hour about your day, or visualize you and your tulpa racing through an obstacle course. And so I did. I felt very silly, but I did. If Roger heard me, though, he didn't say anything. I also joined an online tulpa forum where I met Ice and Storm. Ice was an online role player similar to a mod user, who had originally created Storm as a character for his role-playing, but had decided to make her real. He still did role-plays with her, though. They did them together now, playing out Storm's backstory before she became real, based on her memories of that time. I joined them in one of their role-plays, playing as Roger, my Morgan Freeman iguana. For me, it was just an exercise in character design. But I'm a writer, so that's fun for me. Weird, maybe, but entertaining, and it was social, and it was a pretty good exercise, too. And the more I thought about it, the more I started to wonder if this was really as weird as it seemed. I've read before that if you're trying to work through a hard decision or problem, explain it to your cat, because that forces you to express your thoughts more clearly. And this felt a lot like that, with the only difference being that the person I was talking to wasn't a real flesh-and-blood person, he was a magic-talking iguana. But we treat fictional people like they're real all the time, Nobody watched Harry Potter and goes, that could never happen. Instead, we cry when our favorite characters die, or spend all our time talking about whether Hermione would have been better with Harry or Ron. It, it doesn't really matter, because they're not real, but we feel about that anyway. In the end, I still don't know what tulpamancy is. Is it a delusion, or a ritual, or just an incredibly elaborate performance art piece? I expect that different people get involved for different reasons. I still don't think that anyone is actually creating life. But I wasn't convinced anymore that this is some sort of mass delusion. I can even understand the reasons why someone would choose to get involved in this, even if they knew that it wasn't real. It's an opportunity to not only express creativity, but become part of a community that responds positively to that creativity, whether you're in on it or not. And for someone looking for positivity, or community, or companionship, Somebody who likes creative writing and doesn't mind playing along by these rules? 
then maybe that could be a very good thing for them to have.